In 2016, the first season of Stranger Things was released and instantly became a massive hit for Netflix. The series was created by brothers Matt and Ross Duffer, and its success is largely thanks to its massive nostalgic draw due to the clear nod to the films of the 80s and its influences from the works of Lovecraft, Spielberg, Carpenter, and Stephen King. Season 1 was shot on a Red Dragon, Season 2 was on the Helium, Season 3 was on the Monstro, and the latest season was shot on the Arri Alexa LF. And as is the case with cinematography in general, the look of Stranger Things is heavily in the lighting and production design. Without that, they'd never hit that beautifully nostalgic end result. But the color grading comes in at the end to bring all of those elements together in one unified whole. So today we're going to try to recreate the atmosphere of the series only using the color grade inside of DaVinci Resolve. Our first clip here was shot on the red, and we chose it because it does have a bit of that 80s atmosphere to it, with many light sources and colors, so it's a decent base to start from. Stranger Things has has an aspect ratio of 2 to 1. This format is called Superscope or Univisium. And to adapt our project to this format, we can simply go to the timeline menu, then output blanking and choose 2.0. Now I can start laying my nodes. First, I will configure the red log to Rec 709 conversion. So I'll apply the color space transform effect on our node and configure it to red log 3G10 in input gamma and gamma 2.4 in output gamma. As always, to take advantage of the full dynamic range of what log offers, we're going to do most of the grading before the Rec 709 conversion. On my first node, dedicated to primary corrections, we'll go to the log wheels tab and adjust our white balance just like that. We'll also increase the saturation a bit to plus 5%. Same with the color boost. And now we're going to use a little trick to increase the contrast without affecting brightness. First, we're going to add two parallel nodes and place the color compressor effect on the first one. With the eyedropper, we're going to select the tint of the woman's face, then set compress the luminance to around 0.200. And now you can see on the scopes how the colors are squeezed. Now on the second node, I'll apply the contrast pop effect and adjust the details amount to around 0.200. And as you can see, we don't lose any luminosity and get a more robust image. In addition, this technique will sharpen the midtones without affecting the highlights or shadows, a bit like the midtones detail function, but totally controllable. In Stranger Things, we also find a lot of turquoise blue in the low lights and midtones. And to get that here, I'll add two parallel nodes. And with the qualifier tool, I'll select all the warm tones. And finally, I'll refine the mask with the matte finesse options, then link this mask to the node below. Next in the key tab, I'll reverse my mask so the corrections that I apply here won't affect the previous selected warm tones. Next, with the primary color wheels, push the gain a bit toward the blue and cyan tones just like that. And finally, to soften the effect, we can reduce the opacity of this mask by 50%. Now we'll go back to our very first node and adjust the contrast slightly to compensate. And as you can see, we now need to adjust the skin tones. In Stranger Things, the characters have pinkish skin. So we'll add a new node and place a power window here. Then in the tracker tab, start the track and let it do its thing. Now with the color warper tool, move the point slightly like this, and then we'll reduce the saturation by lowering the color boost to minus 10% and increase the shadows by plus 5%. And now we have something much more natural and consistent with the series. In this clip, we do have this window on the left here, which is clearly visible, so we do want to accentuate its presence. To do that, we'll add three parallel nodes, and with the power window tool, we'll create a mask following the perspective of the light emanating from this window, then start tracking. Now link this mask to the second parallel node, then still with the power window tool, this time add a gradient mask from left to right like this. Now link this mask to the next node, then with the RGB curve, increase the exposure just a bit for this specific area. And we're going to make some minor adjustments with the hue versus hue and hue versus sat curves just to finish it off. Now we're going to start to work after our Rec 709 conversion node. So add a node and we will intensify that bluish tone a bit more. With the color warper chroma luma tool, set the angle to about minus 40, lock the center point, and move the point that way to increase the blue, saturation, and midtones and shadows. And now we have just two last steps to finalize our look. The first will be the the addition of a glow in the highlights. This is very present in the films of the 80s, and we can replicate that by adding a glow effect and adjust it so that the result is very subtle. So shift the composite type from normal to screen and reduce the blending opacity. Finally, we'll add a vignette. We'll use the effect in the advanced mode to get more options. Then we'll shift the settings to taste and then switch the composite type to overlay. And there you go.
Another huge factor in getting the nostalgic feel for the series is the music. And if you've seen season four, several of the songs from the Upside Down are soundtracked by music bed artists Makeup and Vanity Set, like the one you're currently hearing, which is available for licensing right now on Music Bed's platform. And Music Bed is our sponsor for today and one of my favorite places to find music for projects because they work with talented artists and musicians who are passionate about their work. They have 40,000 songs and a curated roster of over 1,000 authentic and relevant artists like Makeup and Vanity Set available to license for any project. Finding music is also easy with their browse and search tools built with filmmakers and creatives in mind. Use anything from genre and mood to advanced filters like BPM and key. And if you still need help finding what you need, their team can help with complimentary song searches. And if you use the code FILMRIOT at checkout, you'll receive one month free when you purchase an annual subscription. So take your project and films to the next level with Musicbed. Logo. For our second clip, we have this outdoor shot that was filmed on an Arri Alexa in Alexa Log C. So again, we'll start by converting it to Rec 709. Now on a new node before our Rec 709 conversion, we'll adjust the white balance just like that. Then as shown before, we'll create two parallel nodes and apply the color compressor effects on the first one and contrast pop on the second. For the color compressor, select a tint and adjust it like this. And with the contrast pop effect, increase the detail amount just slightly. Now we can go back Back to my first node and readjust the contrast. We'll use the RGB curve for this just to make a simple and quick adjustment since as you can see there's too much yellow here. So on a new node use the qualifier to properly select the skin tones of the characters then add a parallel node and link the mask. Then with the color warper shift these two points toward red and you have this. We do think these faces need a little more exposure as well so add two parallel nodes then with the power window tool isolate the face of the character, disabling the 3D option and start the track. As soon as the face leaves frame, we're gonna stop the track. Now we can increase the exposure slightly with the RGB curve, just like that. And we're gonna go back to our tracker tab and position the stack cursor where the face leaves the field, then select all the tracking data that follows and delete it. Next, go to the keyframe tab and activate automatic keyframing on the corrector nine. And then in the power window tab, set the mask opacity to zero. Then move the slider back a little and set the opacity to 100. And this will give us a fade out of the mask. Just don't forget to disable automatic keyframing. Next, because we can, let's raise the offset just a little bit here. And after that, we're gonna repeat the same operation on the other character's face. So we'll create a power window, then start tracking. And then again, we're gonna delete any unnecessary tracking data, then enable automatic keyframing. And now set the opacity to zero, move the cursor back and put the mask to 100. Finally, increase the brightness and adjust the offset. Next, we're gonna create a new node and make some adjustments with the HDR color wheels. We'll warm up the highlights slightly as seen here and increase the contrast the slightest bit. After that, we'll use the color warper tool to add some blue to the shadows. So we're gonna set the axis at about minus 25 and set the points like this. Still with the color warper tool, but this time in hue sat mode, select all points between blue and green and lower their saturation. For me, the trees in the background are way too vivid and saturated, so we'll correct this to get a little closer to the fall colors of Stranger Things. Not a new node, take the hue versus hue curve and adjust the green tint here. And with the color warper, move the points to pull the green toward the orange. And for this specific shot, we increase the luminance of these specific points here. And now we can look at at our before and after. Now to finalize our look, we'll add a little bit of glow and we're gonna add this effect after the Rec 709 conversion, as we explained in the previous example and adjust the settings slightly. And just like before, we're gonna add that vignette still in advanced mode and we're done. As always, check the notes for links to everything that we showed today. And if you're looking for some color grading LUTs, check out our latest LUT pack, Cinematic LUTs V6. We have a Stranger Things inspired LUT in there, as well as a ton of other LUTs inspired by great films and series. But until next time, don't forget to write, shoot, edit, repeat.